Good Saturday evening, everybody. Live and direct from downtown Memphis, Tennessee, I'm meteorologist Austin Onik. A mild day in the Mid-South area, not that much to worry about in the way of heat waves or any major cool downs coming on through. We should see, again, some pretty mild conditions as we get into the rest of this next week, with temperatures neither really going uh, hugely up or down into the next couple of days. But we will have, again, some changes in the temperatures coming up. We'll talk more about that here in just a little bit. There's also a minimum possibility of some severe weather in the Mid-South for tonight, but not looking at a huge amount of anything going on at this point in time, so definitely want to keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for more on that. Some scattered showers across the Mid-South for today, and that's been about all that we've wound up with for right now, and again, seeing less of a chance into Sunday. So if you have any outdoor plans for tomorrow, go ahead and keep them, because rain should be coming to an end as we go into the later portions of Sunday afternoon and evening, looking very good across much of the Mid-South with no problem problems whatsoever. Got any weather pictures out there? We'll show you where to send them coming up in just a little bit. Also drop your location and your weather reports out there. If you got anything in the rain gauge, let us know. Wind speed, direction, temperature. Let's do a little amateur meteorology tonight and give us an idea to see what's more going on. Like uh, Tony Teal, snow in Lawrence, Michigan. Uh, definitely a snow scene up around Chicago, as I understood, uh, up that direction. So thank you very much for that weather report from well up north. And so far tonight, uh, Mr. Teal with the farthest away checking in person for this evening. Thank you very much uh, for checking in from that area tonight. And again, if you've got anything in the way of questions, concerns, comments, please again drop me an email at austin.onic at wreg.com. And welcome to everybody who's checking in for tonight to see what's going on. Rest of the evening, again, could be a rumble of thunder out there. We don't have a great deal of anything happening outside of just some speckles of showers out there. Forgot to mention, if you can't stick around for the entire forecast tonight, that's cool. Again, the forecast information in the blue bar scrolling by you at the bottom of the screen. Or again, you can check out more about our 7 to 10 day forecast available at wreg.com slash weather. By the time we hit daybreak tomorrow, there could be a lingering shower or thunderstorm, but winds coming in from out of the northwest will be doing a good job of drying things out and shoving that rainfall out of our way into tomorrow. So we should not see much of a problem out there. Now through this evening, Again, should be looking at temperatures pretty mild, but about the time we hit midnight and afterwards, should be in the mid to upper 60s. Those clouds and chances of rainfall will be sticking around. Dawn patrol tomorrow morning briefly dropping into the mid 50s, and then by lunchtime tomorrow and just afterwards, should be back in the mid 70s, lower 70s for the most part, and still pretty mild about this time tomorrow night with clouds coming and going across the area, but we should see a fair amount of sunshine for tomorrow. Almost about as spot on normal as you can possibly get for this time of the year. Temperatures again going back into around the mid to upper 70s and seeing again temperatures a little bit warmer than what they were yesterday. Low temperature of 52 degrees this morning and that's just below our average of about 57 degrees. So not too bad out there where it comes to the temperatures for this time of the year. Could be getting a lot warmer, that's for certain, and we're not seeing that uh, at this point in time. Traffic continues to be shut down around I-240 and Poplar uh, for this evening as we see again the potential for more chances of showers and thunderstorms out west not affecting the traffic situation here where it comes to the paving going on on Poplar at 240. Interstate 240 shut down between 385 and around the flyover area. So if you're planning on traveling through this location, traffic on the overpasses eastbound and westbound Poplar is open. Same thing for Park and Quince Avenue overpasses. So you should be able to get through there. But once again, with paving work going on here, a lot of construction still going on to make sure the roads are in good shape. So keep it tuned to News Channel 3 for the latest. If this wraps up early, we'll uh, get teed out. We'll let us know. We'll put it on social media to let you know a little bit more about what's going on. Mississippi River, again, continuing to rise. You've got to be seeing the numbers stay into around the about the 33-foot mark or so into the evening hours and continuing again to see the possibility of more rainfall in the Mid-South making its way into the area. According to uh, retired National Weather Service hydrologist Gene Wrench, working for the National Weather Service in Memphis, more rain up there could push these numbers even higher 
later on down the line. But fortunately, it looks like the crest is going to be occurring as we go toward about midweek. So hopefully, if you're planning a stroll across Big River Crossing or a bike ride, you'll be able to get through because unfortunately, with these high river levels out there, it's been doing a pretty good job of closing the gates because it is a little bit into and around the area for right now into anybody crossing over between West Memphis and Memphis, Tennessee. So little, if anything, to do about that except wait for this water to make its way all the way on downstream for right now. Uh, Charles Stanton wishing to have some 70s in Milwaukee. Yeah, I've noticed a bit on the changes up there, a little, a little bit on the cooler side and also snowfall up that direction. So hopefully everybody stays warm up there. Celia Horton Lair, Chester County, 71 degrees. Thank you very much uh, for that one. Peggy Shelby, thank you very much for the condolences. Uh, House Onic Dog Zoe passed away earlier this last week. So uh, thank you very much. Uh, for those condolences there. Christy Johnson, Salisbury, Tennessee, mostly clear and 71 degrees. Good news on that one. Following information about the reports of that earthquake earlier this week around Dyersburg, about a 3.7, one of the bigger earthquakes we've had in a while. One very early this morning before we were on the air with daybreak around Tiptonville, a uh, reported magnitude of 2.2. Data coming in from the United States Geological Survey and the University of Memphis Center for Earthquake Research and Information. If you felt this or any of the other earthquakes around the Mid-South this last week, please fill out a Did You Feel It report and let these agencies know what you felt and when your information can give you more details as to what exactly and how exactly the energy of an earthquake goes out through the crust of the earth. And that can help seismologists study these things better so your information could really play a big part in helping to keep people safe in the future. So please think about that. Our storm system, such as it is, is really not that much. The main energy of the storm system way up here. Rain mixed with snow around Lake Michigan, parts of areas of Wisconsin, back into northern Illinois, and now southern parts of uh, Michigan picking up some activity there. But here in the Mid-South, this is a pretty moisture-limited system, and around the back side of this storm system, we've got very dry air starting to make its appearance, and that is going to play a big factor in what goes on with our forecast into tomorrow. We'll show you a little bit more about that coming up here uh, in just a little bit. So we're seeing again some changes out there, but not that much at this time. Joan Gray, 72 in Guys, Tennessee. Welcome to the show. Thank you very much. John Mulliken, welcome uh, from the Pink Palace Museum and Skydiver Extraordinaire. Thank you very much uh, for dropping on by. I do appreciate that. Chances of showers out there, again, we're not looking at a lot for the time being. This is about the amount that we've got throughout the rest of the day, just sporadic showers, and that's about it. Now, the storm prediction Center has been showing the potential of maybe some severe weather into and around portions of central and eastern Arkansas tonight. It's a marginal threat. It's not a huge potential, but it will see again the potential of some activity out there. But uh, again, we'll keep our eyes on that. In the meantime, what we're looking at is just light showers, a few moderate showers, maybe some thunderstorms out there, and one or two of those, again, could go a little stronger, but we're just not seeing a lot of activity for right now. Hopefully it stays that way. We'll see. We could do a little bit less rainfall at this point in time and see a little bit less as to what may be coming our direction. Temperatures right now just past 8 o'clock back in the lower 70s and winds out of the southwest. These are going to do a good job of keeping the temperatures up by just a little bit. So once again, those numbers will have a big impact on our temperatures as we go into tomorrow as those winds start to change. Now through about midnight or so, the best chances of rainfall will be making their way into the area, approaching I-40. And this is where the big change starts to happen because over here, again, we've got the winds coming in from out of the south-southwest. As this storm system approaches, the winds turn out of the northwest, and that means drier air. So this system didn't have much moisture to begin with, and drier air knocking on our door is going to do a good job of tamping down any chance of rainfall that we really could see with this system. So by tomorrow morning, about daybreak, that should do it for the rainfall, but it's also going to be a little cooler out there, upper 40s to around lower 50s as those winds turn out of the north as we go into tomorrow. So we should see, again, the possibility of some drier conditions, but a bit brisk tomorrow, uh, again, for right now. Charlotte Pryor, welcome from Clarksdale. Uh, Lita Huggins from North Carolina, thanks for stopping on by. Trey Harris, 
uh, 73, mostly cloudy in Gleason, Tennessee. Thank you very much for stopping by. Bernick Davis, uh, Paris, Tennessee, world's largest fish fry. Terribly sorry that I haven't uh, been in, get, able to get to that. I'm running a little light on fried fish these days. Sounds like a good thing right there. Michael Clark, how did I like Endgame uh, with my schedule? I have not been able to actually go to the movie just yet. So eventually I'm going to be uh, going next week. My brave wife, God bless her, is uh, planning on going with me after one of her colleagues at Shelby at uh, Bartlett City Schools in the tech department, uh, Mr. Barrett, convinced her to uh, go with me on that. But I have not seen the movie just yet. In the meantime, I'm not looking for any spoilers either. So thank you very much uh, for that out there for right now. Right now, for the rest of the Mid-South area, we're going to be seeing, again, the potential for some dry conditions into tomorrow. But thanks to those northerly winds tomorrow, it is going to be a little cooler. So numbers tomorrow by lunchtime will only be in the mid to upper 60s. And then high temperatures tomorrow back in the upper 60s to lower 70s. So we're going to see a nice little change coming up before we warm back up again into the next few days. Clouds kind of come and, coming and going, but there's not really too much out there. Okay, uh, new information from the Storm Prediction Center. That possibility of severe weather we were looking for earlier that I just described to you on the radar. It appears right now the Storm Prediction Center has removed that from the Mid-South forecast. So good news for right now. The green area right here does not register on the key because this is just a generic risk of thunderstorms. So right now, very good news. Potential for severe weather has been shifted out of the Mid-South forecast. So very nice to be able to tell you about that. So hopefully again to again uh, some quiet conditions. Now thunder, that's a good possibility. And we may see again some of that into tomorrow morning, but that should be about it. Rest of the forecast out there. And again, seeing some temperatures a little cooler back into the lower 70s or so. Through Monday, dry, lots of sunshine. And also looking at dry conditions with increasing clouds early on Tuesday. Now getting into around Tuesday afternoon and evening, slight chances of showers and thunderstorms. So far, no severe weather out of this, so good news on that. But in the next several days after that, from April into May, we're going to see temperatures dropping a bit into the lower to mid 70s by week's end, thanks to getting cooled off by more rainfall coming on through. Now the good news is Next weekend, if it holds, looks spectacular. Lots of very nice temperatures in the mid-70s with plenty of sunshine out there. Unfortunately, between here and there, we've got more of a chance of showers and thunderstorms right on into next weekend. Thursday into Friday, looks like about a 60% coverage chance for the area and then drying out into next weekend afterwards. So we could see, again, some soggy conditions going into next weekend or so, but that's mainly going to be uh, toward about the end of this next week. So that's about as good as it gets. Now into the first full week of May, looking good. Temperatures a little bit cooler, staying very mild. We've had a very mild and extended springtime, so we've not seen anything in the way of heat waves. We could easily, at this time of the year, very easily be back in the lower 90s. We have not been Hoping it stays that way, and again, great news at this point in time to see that things are not going to be uh, doing anything in the way of heating us up around here for right now. Uh, retired News Channel 3 personality and production department extraordinaire Eddie Goss, welcome to the show. Uh, good to see you around. Hope everything's going well uh, for the time being. Uh, Bryant Lewis, what about Tunica? Also seeing, again, some warmer numbers out there for the next couple of days through about lower 80s around the Tunica cutoff and back to around Robinsonville, and then chances of showers and thunderstorms into and around the rest of the week. So it could be, again, the need for an umbrella out there into the next couple of days. When's the best time to get ready for severe weather? When nothing is happening. It's nice blue sky outside or cloudy and no rainfall or any chance of severe weather anytime soon. This is the best thing you can do to get ready to make certain you know where to go to, have batteries ready for your weather radio, and sign up for Weather Call today where Tim and Jim will call you when severe weather threatens. And that, again, is a good opportunity to make certain you're in the know about what's happening by getting several ways of getting weather information. Do not just rely on tornado sirens to let you know what's happening. That is something that is meant for outdoor activities. 
you need something that's going to let you know while you've got your phone on you. And again, push alerts on your tablet or phone from the National Weather Service, also a very good idea just to be on the safe side there. 62 days and counting until Asteroid Day. The United Nations making a push to make certain everybody is more aware of what lurks out there beyond the borders of our planet's orbits and beyond even that. And what could be a threat to us here on our planet, we need to start looking farther and more detail to find out more about what's going on out there. So find out more about Asteroid Day. It's coming up soon at asteroidday.org from the United Nations to find out more about that threat from outer space and about how we could actually benefit from some of those asteroids out there, not hitting the Earth, but from what they may carry. So something to think about there if you're thinking about future asteroid investments, possibly. Uh, A. Butler, 1967, beautiful sunrise this morning, gorgeous shot from around Jonesboro, Arkansas. Don't get a lot of shots from around that area, but thank you very much to A. Butler, 1967, for a beautiful view showing up there. If you've got weather pictures, I would love to see them, and I would love to show them, just like Mr. Butler's picture there, but I can't show them if you don't send them. You kind of see the problem I'm running into here. So go ahead and send them to me on various forms of social media, or once again, if you're more comfortable uh, doing it the old-fashioned way, and when did I start thinking of email as old-fashioned? I'll never know, but email at austin.onic at wreg.com slash weather to find out more details there. All right, into tomorrow morning, a little cool. Temperatures back in the mid-50s and chances of rainfall coming to an end. We should see again some fairly sunny skies tomorrow, but I don't think the clouds are going to be going away entirely. So we could see again the potential for again some uh, nicer conditions tomorrow, a little bit cooler. So maybe want to keep that jacket handy just to be on the safe side out there. And we'll go ahead and keep an eye on that forecast again throughout the rest of the evening. But fortunately, it looks like right now, if you're just tuning in, uh, the threat for severe weather has been removed from the Mid-South area, so very nice to be able to tell people about that. So, so far, it doesn't look like anything more than just a few rumbles of thunder out there, and that's going to be about it. That's going to be it for us, too. We're going to wrap things up here with the latest edition of News Channel 3's exclusive video weather blog. Weather Overtime will have an update on the draft for the NFL in Nashville coming up on News Channel 3 at 10 with Megan Rice. And, of course, Janae Lewis will be here with more information about what's going on with the Mid-South News all around the entire area. So stick around for a lot more on that. And, of course, I'll have your forecast again coming up tomorrow morning on News Channel 3 Daybreak. Thanks a lot for joining us, and stick around for a lot more with News Channel 3 throughout the rest of the weekend on air and online.